So welcome back. Um, we're still working on the painting that I started yesterday of Wicklow Head and this has pretty much dried during the night. So what I want to work on is for the next 15 minutes or so is um, fine tuning it a little bit. I'm noticing that I want to change some of the, the colour notes. There's a little bit too much blue in there. I overused the indigo and I want to bring these cliffs down a bit further to give them a bit more prominence and just, you know, put a few more finishing touches over the whole painting. So if you want to stay with me for a little while and just see how I'm going to make some corrections on this at this point. So bit by bit, the thing I want to change first is the color of the sky and the sea. It's much more silvery, much more white, paler, and this blue is too dominant to me. So I'm going to work out a different kind of gray. I did use indigo for this sea. I'm going to instead combine two of the colors that are already here, the magenta and the viridian into a gray and see how that works in harmonizing the the colors of the whole piece. So I'm just putting on some gloves to get started. All right, so I've got Viridian here. I've got Magenta. I'm going to pull the two of those together. You can see it makes a kind of deep purplish color. And I might start with some of this where I want it to be a very pure kind of transparent color. I'm just dipping my brush into my thinner, my sans odor, and pulling that across here. So I want that to be a deep inky kind of color. And I want this to come down a little bit more. So I'm just going to bring these dark shapes down a bit. And here, the reflection in the water and the dark in the cliff kind of blends into one that that shadow shape is going up. I'm going to add a bit more red to that. A bit more green coming through here. And some more of this dark here at the base. And I'm bringing it down a bit further too. And some of that over here, that's a much more prominent shadow. I'm accentuating some of these contrasts too, where it's really strong. I'm still at the moment just working with Viridian Green and Magenta. I'm looking for the darkest notes, which is all around the base, in the water, here, and especially where the lightest and the darkest shapes meet. So I'm making a bit more of these shapes here and here. A very strong contrast here with that dark. What I'm going to do now is add some white to it. And I want to get a kind of midway between the green and the red to make a, I'm going to add a little bit of brown to that. Got some burnt umber here. A little bit of blue. So I'm just looking for a, a grayish shade, a bit more white. So I'm looking in a way for a bit more neutral gray 
than what I've got here with that very bluish color. And I'm going to come back up over some of these. I'm going to add a little bit more brown to that to neutralize it a little bit more still. And like this whole area here, you've got the strong dark, you've got the small area of white highlight and a grayer area here that I want to bring out again. So I'm back up here, a bit more brown, a bit of yellow, a bit more white. Yes, yeah, so I'm just varying these greys a little bit. A bit more brown into this mix here. I'm trying to be careful at the same time not to make it too bitty, too many little bits of colour. So I'm rinsing my brush. I'm going to add now some of the green that's coming down on, on these. So I'm going into, here's my sap. Here's some burnt sienna, kind of rusty green. It's a lovely colour. I'm coming in here now with this on these. So I'm introducing some variations. All right, and here where it's lightest, I got my green, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this and some white to make it a little bit brighter. In some areas, just where the, the light is cut there, that really accentuates the actual line of the uh, of the grass coming down like that. And here adding a bit of white to that. This line of light. Like that, okay. Now going back to the C colour here, and I want to bring this deeper colour out, but it needs to be much paler than that is. So I'm going to go back to that green and red that I had, add some white to that. Add a little bit of brown to that too, just to neutralise it. What I'm looking for is this sort of silvery white colour. So I'll try this and see how it works. Yeah, it's more like that, just brighter. And right now I'm just pulling the brush right across the surface here. Like that and see how it kind of breaks up to feel like the surface of the sea, like that.
I'm going to now add more green to this. This is a little bit of brown. For this deep kind of bottly green here in this area here. That's a bit too strong. I'm going to soften it with a touch of that red. Touch of brown. It's a bit brown or closer to shore. And I want to get some of that dark color again. There's the green. I'll add a touch of indigo into that. See here where it's darkest. And then bringing some of this out into the water. I've no, pretty much no paint on the brush. I'm just working this. Like that. Soft. Rinsing my brush and picking up a smaller brush, I'm going to go back into this darker color and get some of these darkest notes back in there. Back into indigo here. Right along here, just trying to establish the darkest parts. And they're coming back in here where it's darkest. And with that lighter C, I want to lighten the sky and the distant mountain there. So I'm coming back in with some white into this gray, a bit more white. And some light on the water here. There's an oops so red on the brush. So don't panic. I've got a baby wipe here, just gonna take it off. And clean my brush. And go back in again. So 
So I'm dragging the lighter part in through the, the darker area here and letting them just blend at the edges there a little bit. And some of that lighter here at the base. But with that, I've changed, I think for the better, the, the tonality of the painting, which had been a bit too blue. And just alter that a little bit. And I want that back, it's a bit too purplish. I'm just going to make it a little bit grayer. Okay, and from the yellowish grass, I'm going to make it a little bit deeper green. I've got my sap green, I got some burnt sienna. A bit more sap. So with that, I'll go back to my foreground. So it's mostly this greenish grass. I'm going to start again with that. It just needs more, more paint added in. Some more of that. I've got some yellow ochre here today. Add a bit of white to that. And I'm keeping doing that feathery, grassy kind of movement. And some of that on the beach here. Get to grey that down a little bit. come back with the, the brighter green. Again, this kind of upward movement. And I'm kind of flicking the brush through my fingers, if you can see, like this finger is doing that to flick that movement up. And some more of that green down here. I'm going to add a little bit of indigo to it to make it darker. See how this, I'm just flicking up the brush to give those darker notes.
Then I'm going to go back to my purple with a smaller brush and that is magenta. And I'm going to start by where it's kind of in shadow because each clump of heather, it's catching the light on the top but it's in shadow underneath. I'm going to add a little bit of indigo to where it's darker, like at the base, like that. And just very small feathery kind of marks. I'm not lifting the brush and dabbing it. I'm just, I don't have much paint at all, but I'm just sort of feathering it out. Next, I'm going to go to the magenta with some white in it. And this will be for like light at the top of the clumps of heather where the light catches it. Like that. And then with what's left in the brush, dotting it a little bit, breaking up the green. And spreading it through. 